Hey folks, this is Riker with the Diablo 3 patch 2.6.6 Season 18 Witch Doctor Guide. In this video, we'll cover a starter guide for Witch Doctors in Season 18, as well as what modifications you would make to the Zuni Masa build to factor in the new items coming with patch 2.6.6. So first off, the Zuni Masa set is the starter set for Witch Doctor in Season 18. That's the one that you can earn via Hadrig's gift in the Season Journey. The Zuni Masa set is very strong and can build into a Dagger of Darts build, which is one of the strongest builds in the game. With Zuni being the starter set for Witch Doctor, you can very easily transition into this endgame build and then as well further boost your power into a Legacy of Nightmares Dagger of Darts build. Now one note on starting your season, whenever a new season is coming, do not do the challenge rift that week. Wait for the season to start, typically Friday, then make a season character, then do the challenge rift, and then open that challenge rift cache on your new character. If you've done the challenge rift earlier in the week before the season started, you will not be able to open that challenge rift cache on your season character. And that challenge rift cache is an enormous boon to a fresh character. It contains almost 5 million gold, almost 500 blood shards, a bunch of crafting materials, and bounty materials as well. Now once you've loaded into the game at level 1 and you have opened your bounty bag, one thing that you can try to gamble for with your blood shards are the Pox Falls pants. Witch Doctor doesn't have the best options for level 1 gambling, and even at higher level, there aren't any obvious choices of items to gamble for with really good guarantees. Pox Vaults are decent, they add a good amount of extra DPS, and in general Witch Doctors are pretty strong for the 1 to 70 leveling and don't need a whole lot of help. That said, as you're leveling, if you find any items that will buff a particular skill, it's a good idea to build around that. Another leveling note, rubies, rubies, rubies. Whereas most endgame builds tell you to put an emerald in your weapon, you only benefit from the extra crit damage that it provides if you actually crit. And in general, as a low level character, you don't have high crit chance, so the flat damage that a ruby gives you will far outweigh the crit damage of an emerald. Something else you want to save up money and crafting materials for is trying to craft a level 70 weapon once you hit level 40. You're going to upgrade your blacksmith to the max, and then ideally you want to go for a two-handed mace. That is a slow, hard-hitting weapon. This is a resource-efficient weapon. Once you've crafted that level 70, you then are looking for, as a secondary attribute, reduced level requirement, which can roll as much as negative 30, meaning you can equip it potentially at level 40. Now, it could be difficult to get that property. One tip is, if you already have as a secondary stat on the weapon one of the crowd-controlling stats, then that greatly increases your odds of the other stat becoming reduced level requirement. For instance, if you want to re-roll it. When you are re-rolling secondary stats, don't even bother re-rolling hoping to get reduced level requirement if the fixed stat that you're going to leave will not be a crowd controlling property. There are a ton of different crowd control properties, but any item can only ever have one. So if that property is already locked in, then you are eliminating a vast quantity of potential secondary affixes and greatly increasing your odds of getting reduced level requirement. All right, now you've made it to level 70. How do you now progress through your season journey to get your Hadrig's gift? Here is a build that is gear independent. You can do this with yellow items and using this you should be able to progress all the way to getting your two piece bonus of Zunis. Of course, if you have legendaries that give huge buffs to the damage of certain skills, then work those into the build. As our primary attack, we're going to go with Poison Dart Splinters. We've got some mana heavy skills, so having something to shoot out when we're out of mana is a good idea. Next we're taking Locust Swarm Searing Locusts. This is a very mana expensive skill, however we don't have to spam it. Locust Swarm will naturally spread to nearby enemies and it's a damage over time so you can sort of let it do its thing. Next we'll be taking another damage over time power, Haunt. This one far cheaper. 
Still though, we want to optimize our resource effectiveness, so we're going to take the Resentful Spirits rune in order to get a 2 for 1 cast. This skill deals us damage over 12 seconds, and if the enemy dies, it will then spread. You'll want to be spamming this one more often than Locust Swarm because it doesn't spread as easily, and you want to make sure you're haunting the enemies around you. Next, we're taking Zombie Dogs Leeching Beasts. These will be contributing a little bit of damage, but also will help our survivability by serving as meat shields, and they will be adding life per hit. Our heavier hitter when it comes to pets will be Gargantuan Humongoid. Humongoid is a mandatory rune on Gargantuan because it grants the Gargantuan the ability to cleave, that is to hit multiple enemies at once. However, newly buffed in patch 266 is the craftable mojo Spite, and this item grants all Gargantuans the cleave ability. If you do get Spite, then feel free to select a different rune, for instance, Restless Giant. Next, we're taking Soul Harvest Languish. This will give you armor and intelligence, serving as an offensive and defensive buff. As for our passives, we'll be taking Fetish Sycophants. When you hit enemies with your spells, for instance, Poison Dart, you have a chance to summon a Fetish. The more Fetishes you have, add a little bit of damage, but also serve as more meat shields. Next, we're taking Fierce Loyalty. This gives us movement speed for having pets, and lets us have one additional zombie dog. Next, we're taking Midnight Feast, which increases the damage of our Gargantuan and zombie dogs, and lets us have yet another zombie dog. And then lastly, we'll take Pierce the Veil, which increases all of our damage by 20%, at the cost of increasing all of our mana costs by 30%. That might seem like a rough trade considering we're using some pretty mana heavy skills, but that's why we're not looking to be spamming attacks and also letting our Gargantuan do its work. So using this setup, you should be able to unlock your two-piece bonus of Zuni, which as a power makes your fetish army last until they die and greatly reduces the cooldown on fetish army. So now moving towards our four piece, that means we're going to definitely want to work in the fetish army skill. We'll drop Poison Dart for it, because now we're going to have a greater source of continuous damage. And we'll be taking the Legion of Daggers rune, because it's just the best rune, it has the best synergy and increases the DPS the most. Thanks to this added damage, we can afford to drop one of our other damaging skills, Locust Swarm, and substitute in some mobility, Spirit Walk Jaunt. The difficulty will be ratcheting up, so having that mobility power will be useful. Once we've acquired our four-piece bonus, we get a significant toughness buff. You and your pets take less damage for every fetish you have out. Still though, the difficulty will be rising even more as we progress to get our six-piece bonus, so a change that you can make is swapping out Fierce Loyalty for Swampland Attunement for extra toughness. Using this setup, you should be able to get all the way to your six-piece bonus and then start progressing into a Dagger of Darts build. Now at this point, a priority to be spending your Blood Shards on would be Helms in order to get the Mask of Jerem and the Carnival. The Mask of Jerem makes our pets do a lot more damage, and the Carnival is essential to a Dagger of Darts build, as it makes your pets shoot out darts along with you. Once you have those two, your next priority would be pants in order to get the Depth Diggers pants that increases the damage of your generators, which Poison Dart is not until you take the Spined Dart rune. And then as a last note, I would be spending my Death's Breath to try to upgrade a Yellow Ceremonial Knife into a Dagger of Darts. You can't run a Dagger of Darts build without a Dagger of Darts. For the full video description on a Zunimasa Dagger of Darts build, check out this video here, which also gives the variant for the Legacy of Nightmares version. And while those are for Season 17, they are still mostly applicable. However, there are a couple changes that you'll make for Season 18. For the Zunimasa variant, you're going to want to work in an Echoing Fury into your cube. By killing enemies, we gain a stackable attack speed buff that really builds up to something ferocious, which will translate into a ton of damage. This means we'll be losing our Sacred Harvester, which we were pairing with Lakumbas to buff our toughness, so we're also going to lose Lakumbas and instead work in two pieces of the Augkild set. The two-piece bonus of Augkilds now gives us damage reduction and more flat damage. And the three-piece bonus, which will benefit from thanks to our cube ring of royal grandeur, gives us more damage versus elites 
and less damage taken from elites. Once you've got the Zuni version of the Dagger of Darts built down, you can progress into the Legacy of Nightmares version or the new Legacy of Dreams version, which will be more powerful and one of the best builds in the game. In case you haven't seen it, our tier list of the best builds of Season 18 went up earlier this week. Do check that out. And right before we wrap up this video, just a quick reminder that if you want to get your name on the Rikers Raiders 2019 t-shirt and banner and merch, you have until September 1st. It only takes one dollar. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.